Hello and welcome. Today we're doing a question from Lee Code called Longest Palindrome Except String. It is a medium. Let's get started. Given a string S, return the longest palindrome except string in S. So just to recap what a palindrome is, it reads the same forward and backward. So a common one is a race car. Reading this backwards, we have R-A-C-E, C-A-R. So it's race car, forward and backwards. And it's mirrored across this E, right? So we see that C's are the same, A's are the same, R's are the same. Even if this E wasn't here and our input string was rack car, this would still be a palindrome because it's still mirrored just between two characters instead of being a character that's mirrored on. So let's take a look at example one. And again, we wanna find the longest palindrome except string we can in our input S. So we have the input B, A, B, A, D. Here we have a palindrome of B, A, B and A, B, A. Both are length three. So either one of these would have been a valid output. Example two, we have C, B, B, D. Here, the longest palindrome we can make is just B, B. And so we output and it has a length of two. So before getting started, let's look at a couple of examples. So say I have the following two input strings here. My first input string that I am testing with is W-A-B-A. -A. The longest palindrome except string I can make here is A-B-A. -A. And I'm splitting that on the B. That is where I'm mirroring this. So what I wanna do is check if the character to the left of me and the right of me are equal to each other. They are. So that means I have a longer palindrome than when I was just on my character. Now I want to see if I can continue pushing out. However, I see that I am out of bounds here. So the longest palindrome except string I can make here is just the length of three, A, B, A. Now, if I had a second input string as an example here, W, A, B, B, A, the longest palindrome except string I can make is A, B, B, A, length of four. And here I'm splitting between the two characters, between these two Bs. And what I wanna do is make essentially the same check as before, except between the two characters. Are my two characters equal? And we see that they are. Well, now I wanna continue pushing left and right to see how far I can go to see what the biggest palindrome except string I can make is. So if I move, say I had a left pointer here, my left pointer down one more to A, and my right pointer down one more to A as well, I see that these two are equal. And now I wanna see if I can continue pushing out. I see that I am out of bounds here, but say I wasn't, say I had a C here. Well, now I would make a check whether these two are equal. I see they are not, and I would know the longest palindrome except string at this point would be these four characters. So that is what I want to do. Given any input string S, I wanna go ahead and make two types of checks. Either at a character, I want to split my palindrome and see what the biggest palindrome I can make is, or between two characters. So how many checks would that be, right? Say I had n characters in my input string S. So that would be n checks for every single character plus n minus one, because now I also want to check between every single character. So in here, if I had four characters, I want to see what the longest palindrome except string I can make is at every single character plus between. So I have four here as well as between WA, between AB and between BA. So that's an additional three. And what this means is that as I iterate through S, I'm gonna be having two checks. And whatever the length I return here, I'm going to compare with the longest palindrome substring length I already have. If it is greater than that, then I just overwrite it with this new one. So just to make this a little bit clearer, say I had B, A, B, A, D, this first example right here. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to check at index zero first. So at index zero, what is the greatest palindrome except string that I can make? Well, that would be just the character B and length of one because I can't go further, I am out of bounds. Well, now what's the next thing that I wanna check? Now I wanna check between A and B. So between zero and one, what is the longest palindrome except string I can make? Well, I see that these aren't even equal. So that's just gonna be zero. I don't even need to make any check here. Now say I move down to index one, what is the longest palindrome except string I can make here? I see that my left and right characters are equal, and I want to see if the left of that and the right of that are equal. Well, I am out of bounds, they cannot be equal, so the longest palindrome except string here is BAB, length of three. 
And I'm just gonna iterate through doing this for every single character. So now when I'm between one and two, I make the same checks again, right? I see that A and B are not equal. There's no point checking. Let's just move on. At index two, I have B and left and right are equal. So I have A, A. Now I wanna continue pushing down. I see now I'm on B and D, they aren't equal. So the longest palindromic substring I can make here is A, B, A, length of three. And as I continue pushing down, now I'm between two and three. We see there's no point in checking, we will output zero. And finally at character three, again, this is A and I have B and D next to it. So the longest substring here is just A with the length of one. And when I check three and four, I see that there's no point checking because this is between A and D. So I will just output zero. Now, I don't actually need to go to my very last character because I know it's just going to be a character of length one, which we've already seen before. We would have had at least a minimum character of one in our previous letters. This way, I don't need to check the character I'm on or the character I'm on plus one because we know we're going to be going out of bounds anyway. So essentially, what we need to do is start from zero up until the very last index in our string. And what we're going to do is check with the character we're on as well as between the character we're on and the next one. So let's go ahead and code all of this up and run through some super quick examples. So to code all of this up, the first thing I'm going to do is make a helper function to figure out whether or not I am a palindrome and how long of a palindrome I can make. So my helper function is going to be is pal self is going to take in a string, a left and right pointer. Now, what I'm going to do is check while I am still in bound. So while my left pointer is greater than zero and my right is less than the length of my string minus one. So I'm not at the very edges of my string. I'm not at index zero or the last one. What do I wanna do? I wanna see if the characters that I want to move to next are equal to each other. So if so, and I'm gonna add this straight into the while condition. So while we're in bounds and the next characters are equal to each other. So string of left minus one equals string of right plus one. I am going to move my pointers down. So left minus equals one and right plus equals one. And I will keep going into this loop up until any of these are not true. So as soon as we end, we know our left and right pointers point to the last valid string, the last valid substring of our longest palindrome. And all I want to do is return those indices. So I'm going to return left, right, and what that length is. So right minus left plus one. Say I stop at index um, three and one. So from one to three, I know I have the longest palindrome. So what does that equal for length, right? Three minus one so that's going to be three minus one which is two plus one because when we subtract it's not inclusive to get that length of three so once we have our helper function now we want to go ahead and iterate through our input string s so for index in range length of s minus one we don't want to go up until the end we want to make two checks first if the middle is a character so what I'm gonna do here is store my output L1, R1, and max length one from self.isPel. And I'm gonna be passing in my string S. And left and right here is just going to be the index that I am on. So I'm passing in index and index. I'm passing in my index and then I'm going to see if the left of me is equal to the right of me. If they are, I'm going to keep moving down. Now, if max length one is greater than whatever max length I have stored so far. Now I'm going to rewrite max length as well as my left and right indices. So left, right equals L1, R1. And of course I want to go ahead and initialize all of these. So max length is going to be zero as are my left and right indices. So left, right, are also going to be zeros. And they simply just tell us 
what index we want to store because we want to return the actual substring, right? So we want to know what index we want to store from what to what. That's why we are storing these markers. And now the second check I want to make is if my middle is between two characters. So if middle between two characters. So if string of index is equal to string of index plus one. Now I want to see what my longest palindromic substring is. So L2, R2, max len2 is equal to self is pal with S, index, and index plus one. And we want to make the same checks here that we did right here. So I'm just going to copy and paste that. If max len2 is greater than max len, then I'm updating max len and updating the pointers that I have as well. In the end, all I want to do is return my string at those saved indices left and right. So left and right plus one just because this is not inclusive. So let's go ahead and run this code. Runtime error expected an indent block after if statement. Okay, these need to be indented. So let me go ahead and do that. So now if we go ahead and run this code, it is accepted and we can go ahead and submit. And it is accepted as well. So before leaving, let's just super quickly run through a short example here just to see what our code does line by line. So if we have our input string s being this, we are setting max len left and right all to zero. Now for index in our range up until the last character. So right now we are going to be looping through zero to zero, one, two, three, zero to two. So we're gonna start with index being zero and L1, R1, max length one are going to be equivalent to the output of our helper function. So L1, R1 and max len one are equal to the helper with this and we are going to be calling in our string s zero and zero so when we call this with zero zero we want to make a check is left greater than zero it is not so we are immediately out of our while loop and we return left to right and the length right here so right minus left plus one so we return zero 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 minus zero plus one and one so we return zero zero and one so here our left index is zero, right is zero, and our length is one. Now we make a check. Is our max length greater than our current max length? It is. So we are going to go ahead and update this. So this is one, and we're going to update these pointers as well. So this is zero, and this is zero. Now the second check we want to make is if the index we're on and the index above us so zero and one are equivalent. So is C equal to B? They are not. So we are out of this if condition back into this for loop and now our index is one. Now here we want to make the same checks here and I'm going to be calling this again, passing in C, B, B, D, index one and index one. Here my string is C, B, B, D, left is one, right is one. Now, while left greater than zero and right less than length of string minus one. So length of string is four, minus one is three. So one is less than three. And the next characters are equal. So is zero and two, the values at those indices, are they equal? So zero is C, two is B, they're not equal. So we just return left to right, right minus left plus one. So here we are returning one, we are returning one, and we are returning one. We are in this if check and we see that max length is not greater than the one that we already have. So no need to make any updates here. And we are in this second call right here. Is the index we are on and the one after us, are those values equal? We see that they are one and two are equal. So now we make the following call. And here we are passing in CBBD, we're passing in one and we're passing in one plus one, which is two. So string is C, B, B, D, left is one, right is two. Now in this helper, while left greater than zero, which it is, 
right less than length of string minus one, which it is as well. And the next two characters are equal. So is zero, oh, right should be two here. So it is the value at character zero and three the same? And we see that it is not the case. So we never actually increase our pointers. And so we just return left, right, right minus left plus one. So here we return one, right is two. And the length of that, so right minus left plus one, which is two. And we see that this max length is greater than the one we currently have. So we can go ahead and make our update. So update this to be one and this to be two. We are back in this for loop and it is our last time in this for loop. We are on index two and we make this call. We know what this will return because at index two, the one to the left and right of us are not equal. So we'll never actually go in this while loop and we would end up returning left, which is two, right, which is two and the max length, which would be one since we never actually moved our pointers. And we know we wouldn't have to actually make any updates here since max length is one. And we would go into this if condition. So is the value at two equivalent to the value at three? It is not the case. And so we exit out of this if, and in the end, all we have to do is return a string of range going from one to three. So we are going to be returning from one to three. It's not inclusive. So we are returning the two Bs, which is exactly what we expect. And super quickly for space and time, for space, we're not really making use of any extra space except for the variables we're storing. So that is constant O of one. And for time, Say our entire string was just all A's, right? Everywhere we go is just a palindrome. So potentially we would be making a check for a palindrome at every single point going as far as we can. So at any point we are going to be iterating through our entire string because we can just keep incrementing our pointers. So that would essentially be for every N and we know in this case, we're actually gonna be having two N. But since this is still an order of N, we can reduce this down to be linear. and what I mean by that, right? We know the total number of checks we're going to be making is n plus n minus one. And for each of these, we are going to be iterating through every single character. So this times n, if every single character is the same, we can just keep moving our pointers every single time. Now this is equivalent to 2n minus one. And any time we have just numbers, we sort of don't really care about them. We can reduce this down to be something of order n. So we're going to be making order n checks. And for every check, we are going to go through every single character. So this is going to be n squared for time. So constant space n squared for time. And that is how we find the longest palindrome except string. If you have any questions at all, let me know down below. Otherwise, I will see you next time.